I can do that. What's up everyone and welcome to the new year. I really hope you guys made new year's resolutions and you're following along with them quite well. If for some reason you didn't manage, welcome to the club. Now what I have gotten in the new year, it's an extremely huge boost in confidence as a web developer when it comes to developing websites, uh, testing my algorithmic skills. And obviously when I uh, saw that post where someone asked, could you actually build a website with your voice? I said, yeah, I can. <laughs> We're going to dive into this project and actually try and implement something that proves a point of concept. Now, of course, I did my research. I made sure that no other service and no other competition is out there that actually does a similar thing. And uh, after billions of Google searches, uh, I haven't actually found anything in particular that would kind of tickle me and tell me, yeah, you shouldn't do that because obviously they do it better. Of course, there is a lot of other things that need to be done to make sure that this project actually works. Uh, and for that, we need to do a bit of planning. So uh, I suggest we don't waste any more time and we jump right into it. Hello, Narrator Philip here. Look at that new beautiful MacBook. Anyway, it's important to know the plan for this project, so let me give you a super fast rundown. Now, I almost wanted to kill myself while trying to research on how to do this and how to do that and how to implement a website that uses voice this way and that way because Stack Overflow told me this and some other website told me that and I was absolutely going furious. But the most important thing is that I knew that in order to start this project, all my faith was in Deepagram and Deepagram was an absolute godsend. Now, no surprise, I found it hard. With a brain smaller than walnut... Oh yes, I agree. It's hard to achieve anything hey, in life, man, especially a website that, that supposedly is going to work with the use of I, one's voice. So how this. about you just start packing your bags on, and go... It. So here we are a few days later and countless hours of me trying to educate myself on how Deepagram works and to make sure that I've understood all the concepts and to make sure that I write some basic code that will actually allow us to interact with Deepagram and uh, get some sort of result that is, is the cornerstone of this whole project. So I think the best thing to do is just for me to show you, to show you the code, uh, to explain what we did and uh, go from here. So let's go. Now, to put things straight and not bore you too much, let me just narrate the whole code and make sure that you get everything in a very quick time and you understand how incredibly fantastic Deepagram actually is. Now a quick fun fact, Deepagram is used by the International Space Station for their space to ground communication and I will also be working with Deepagram to use my voice to hopefully build a website. Now before we even get started with sending the request to Deepagram, we need to capture our voice and in order to do that we need to make use of the Media Capture and Strings API. Rather than giving you the ridiculously overcomplicated and stupid definition, let me put it into my own words. It's an API that allows you to capture video and audio from web browsers. Yep, that's it. So obviously we need to get that working. Write the code and test. Now before we dive into the code, I want to talk to you and show you something totally unnecessary that just made me really excited and I had to do it. A configuration with my development environment in Webpack. I fetch my IP address that's private to my local network, so then I can host my local application on a specific IP, meaning that I can simultaneously access it on my browser, access it on my browser on my phone, and see the application hot reload on here. So. Let me show you. Now, if we just launch our local application with npm run dev, what you'll see is that the website opens up in the browser and the address of that website is the local IP that has been assigned for our local project. Now, I can go onto the web and I can access this IP from my phone. Well, I can make anything. Hello, this is Philip. Nothing happens, nothing happens. Watch the phone, watch the phone. BAM! It's there! Oh, it makes me so excited. It makes me so excited. I'm so excited. Da, da, I just can't hide it. Da, da. Hold on, hold on, hold on. We need to take this excitement somewhere else. Yes, 
I am in a different location and I have my code set up for the uh, web browser to capture my voice. So let's run the actual project with npm run dev. And yes, success, it works. It uh, actually is requesting to use the microphone, meaning it wants to capture our voice. Uh, so I'm just going to allow. Now that we have our media stream set up, we must provide a media recorder, which will prepare the capture data. This is what it looks like. And once it's available, we can emit that data. Here is where the beautiful functionality of Deepogram comes in. To send the prepared data, we need to open a secure WebSocket connection to establish the connection with Deepogram. Once that is complete, we can magically add four WebSocket event triggers to obviously control the events. Now, in our open WebSocket event, we need to send the data to Deepogram, and in our on-message socket event, we need to handle that data and work only with data that's returned as final from Deepogram to ensure accuracy. Then we can add a cheeky little title tag with an ID, reference that ID in our JavaScript, append the transcript, and here is the result. And now I'm going to say something into the microphone. Yes, what you can see is happening is that the audio that's being captured from the web browser is being sent over to Deepogram. Deepogram is sending it back to us and I'm taking the transcript and injecting it directly into the HTML page. Now, how cool is that? Oh, also, make sure to like and subscribe if you're enjoying this video. Now that we are at the point where our voice is captured, we get a transcript back of what we said, we can go ahead and manipulate that transcript by firstly converting it into an ordered array of keywords, to then be able to use those keywords under a given order to categorize and subcategorize events and actions. The top level will be action keywords such as add, delete, modify, save, structure, and so on. The keywords describing elements can be followed, such as button, title, paragraph, input, or keywords that add more value to the actions, such as all, at index. Finally, for now at least, to keep it simple, subcategory keywords such as name, placeholder, default. This list will keep expanding, but we need to prove the premise first. So now on to the fun part. Let's code all of this up and see how much of a fail this will be. Oh my God, that rhymed. What can I say, ladies and gentlemen? Coding ain't easy when there is nothing on Stack Overflow. It's actually what causes you to start thinking. And here I am, thinking. Thinking a lot. Too much, one would say. And it brought me pain, a lot of pain. But somehow, finally, I had something. Something that worked. Something that I was willing to share with the world. May the UI gods be with me. Add a title with the name, we are going to create a simple login screen. Add a paragraph with the name, enter username. Add an input. Add a paragraph with the name, enter password. Add an input. Add a break. Add a break. Add a button with the name submit. There you go. Now, if you guys want to see and make sure that it actually is in the DOM, I can prove that to you. And if we go onto the console, I'll just clear everything. And I'll say the keyword structure. And right there, you can see a HTML collection with all the elements that we have added to the web page. Now, if I don't like what I have on the screen and I just want to start from scratch, all I need to do is just say, delete everything. And there we go. Now the fun doesn't end here. Every single element that I add to the page has a specific ID associated with it, meaning that we can target that element specifically. So to give you an example, I can say, add button with the name Philip, add button with the name subscribe, add button with the name walnut, uh, add button with the name peanuts, delete button with the ID subscribe, there you go, delete button with the ID walnut, and there you go. So you can see whatever is in the DOM, we can actually target specifically to delete, amend, and do certain things to it because it has a unique identifier. Now this project doesn't end here. This is just the beginning of what we're going to make 
out of it. There's going to be so much more to come in part two. That's why you definitely want to subscribe. So in the next part, we're going to do some crazy things. Or maybe I have already done so. Who knows? It's for you to find out and wait for the next video. But some of those crazy things are going to be like positioning stuff and finally being able to use our voice to position things in the center of a div, horizontally and vertically. The problem that developers always struggled with, we're just going to solve with one voice command. The other thing we're going to work on is styling. We're going to give each of the elements styling. We're going to be able to create and make them pretty and actually make those websites come to life. And the final part is, I'm going to use my phone to speak into my phone for it to pick up the voice from my phone and make the website that way. Meaning that I can be a super chill developer and just talk to my phone and get all the work done. So those are the things that are coming up in the next video. That's why make sure you subscribe, make sure you like the video. And as always, I'll see you in the next video. And in this case, in part two, peace.